Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Among in Cloud. In this video, we will be discussing some more common scenario based questions you may encounter in AWS exams and their solutions. So before getting started, so I have created three more videos like this one and I have created a separate playlist for this. I'll make sure to add the link to the playlist in the description box below. Please check that out. But let's continue with this video. Let's dive right into it. The first scenario goes like this. You need a cost effective solution for over provisioning of resources. What should you do? The best solution to this is to address the over provisioning of resources and ensure cost effectiveness. You can configure a target tracking scaling in an auto scaling group, which is also known as ASG. This automatically adjusts the number of instances based on predefined metrics, optimizing resource allocation and cost management. The next scenario goes like this. The application data is stored in a tape backup solution and the backup data must be preserved for up to 10 years. How can you achieve this? To preserve backup data for up to 10 years, you can use AWS Storage Gateway to backup the data directly to Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive. This archival storage option provides long-term retention at a low cost. The next scenario, you need to accelerate the transfer of historical records from on-premises to AWS over the internet in a cost effective manner. How can you accomplish this one? So the best solution to accelerate the transfer of historical records in a cost effective manner, you can use AWS data sync and select Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive as the destination. Data sync optimizes data transfer, ensuring efficient and reliable migration to a long term storage. The next scenario, you want to globally deliver static content and media files to customers around the world with low latency. What is the recommended solution? To globally deliver static contents and media files with a low latency, you can store the files in an S3 bucket and create a CloudFront distribution. So this CloudFront as a content delivery network caches content at edge locations worldwide, ensuring fast and efficient delivery to end users. I have made a separate video on this and the video is out on my channel. Please check that out. The next scenario, an application must be hosted on two EC2 instances and should continuously run for three years with stable and predictable CPU utilization. What should you use? So to host an application on two EC2 instances with stable and predictable CPU utilization for three year duration, you can deploy the application to what is known as reserved instances. Reserved instances provide a cost effective option for long term and predictable workloads. The next scenario, you need to implement a cost effective solution for S3 objects that are accessed less frequently. How can you achieve this one? To implement a cost effective solution for S3 objects that are accessed less frequently, you can create an S3 lifecycle policy to move the objects to S3 standard IA that is infrequent access. So this standard IA storage provides a lower cost option for infrequently accessed data. The next scenario, you want to minimize data transfer cost between two EC2 instances. What steps should you take? To minimize data transfer cost between two EC2 instances, you can deploy the instances in the same region. So by keeping the instances in the same region, data transfer between them is typically not charged at all. The next scenario, you need to import the SSL or TLS certificate of an application. How can you import the certificate into AWS? 
to import the SSL or TLS certificate of an application into AWS, you can either use AWS Certificate Manager or upload the certificate to AWS IAM, that is Identity and Access Management. So these services allow you to manage and use SSL and TLS certificates for your applications. So that wraps up our discussion on common AWS exam scenario based questions and their solutions. Remember, you need to practice these scenarios and understand the appropriate solution to excel in your AWS exam. I hope you enjoyed learning along with me. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more AWS exam tips and tricks. Until next time, Happy learning. Bye-bye.